last class we looked at the simple problem of uh, conduction in a one dimensional plane wall without heat generation, but we saw the interesting boundary conditions. We saw the case of interesting boundary conditions where you got two fluids at different temperatures T infinity 1 and T infinity 2 on the two sides which give rise to two different convective heat transfer coefficients H1 and H2 and though the temperature profile was still linear the algebra was quite involved. It took quite some time for us to figure out the solution under the special case of H1 and H2 turning to infinity then you get the simple case where Q is equal to K into delta T by L and the temperature distribution is simply uh, that linear temperature distribution which T1 and T2 specified at the ends. Towards the end of yesterday's class we looked at the problem of uh, the same plane wall with a variable thermal conductivity. The, thermal, the, the variable thermal conductivity can have two variants the K can be a function of X and the K can be a function of T. When K is a function of X we figured out a generic formulation to get the solution and we wrote it in terms of K of X dx right in yesterday's class. So if I tell you if somebody tells you what the K of X is that is if it is written as A plus B X and A and B are specified to you either from experiments or from theory or from theory you will be in a position to calculate the temperature distribution and the heat transfer rate for the case of a variable thermal conductivity right. So please remember we are able to work out analytical solutions because it is simple enough and it is only one dimensional and so on. The moment it becomes two dimensional unsteady or three dimensional unsteady and so on then you have to solve it numerically either you have to write your own code or you can take resource to software okay. So now we look at the uh, case of variable thermal conductivity where uh, K is a function of T okay. So temperature is what you are seeking that is a solution to the problem that is a variable dependent variable in the problem is temperature and the independent variable is X. Unfortunately the K which is the property thermal conductivity itself depends on T okay. Many times K is a function of temperature therefore uh, variable thermal conductivity is not just an academic exercise it is an important practical problem. So we will look at a not such a simple not a very elementary case but a reasonable linear model for thermal conductivity. So it goes as K is equal to K naught into 1 plus alpha T right. So if you have got if you have done experiments you have got uh, various values of K measured for various values of temperature you can do least square regression and get the values of alpha and K naught if you have a model like this right. As you can see as the temperature increases 1 plus alpha T increases therefore K is it is an increasing model for thermal conductivity right as temperature increases K increases right. Now we will have to get the temperature distribution and the heat transfer rate for a problem in which K exhibits this behavior. We will work out the generic solution then stop in between we will put realist we will put some values for all this alpha uh, K naught the thickness of the wall and all that and get the hang of the whole thing by solving a numerical example before going to a case of one dimensional plane wall with heat generation. So I want to take up two things today 1D plane wall variable thermal conductivity 1D plane wall with constant heat generation rate which mimics what happens in a nuclear fuel rod okay. So let us look at this equation so we have sometimes I use Q V sometimes I use Q triple prime so you can be consistent okay so whichever you prefer you use basically it is watts per meter cube now I told you it is steady so the this term gets knocked off I also told you Q V equal to 0 so the two two terms get knocked off unfortunately I cannot take K out of the differential because K is of K is a function of temperature. Okay, therefore, this is boundary condition. the understanding that T1 is greater than T2 right 
it can also be the other way. Because please remember if T1 equal to T2 in this case there is no heat transfer. It is not the case with radiation. They will continue to emit radiation because of Prevost law, but net radiation will be zero, right? So temperature difference is responsible for heat transfer generally. Okay, why I put generally because it's not applicable for radiative heat transfer. Okay, so now we'll have to solve this. I can use the linear model for thermal conductivity K. Before using the model, I can just start off with a generic formulation. So, d by dx What is K dt by dx? Ah, minus of heat flux, correct. Uh, I would like to use Q itself and QV for volumetric heat generation, right? Suppose you do not like it, put the double prime to, so that you are sure that it is watts per meter square, okay. So, let us keep it like this. Is that correct? K is a constant integral dx 0 to L is L is that okay? People who came late you have to we are doing this problem that is uh, thermal conductivity is varying with temperature that is a problem we are solving. I am proceeding from 6. So, what can you say about this? A is equal to <coughs> Q is equal to minus A. I just change T1 to T2. Now, it is straightforward. If I know the functional form of K of T, it is possible to insert it into the integral, integrate this and substitute the limits T2 and T1 and we are home. But there is only one part of the story. If somebody says what is the temperature in between at the middle of the in the at the middle of the slab or 25 percent from the left side. 75 percent of the from the right side or left side, so we are we are not done yet. But if somebody wants heat transfer rate, we have a, we have an answer to that. Now, can we say that this is also equal to some mean thermal conductivity Km multiplied by the temperature difference divided by the width of the slab? I am proposing because it may be very useful for, from an engineering point of view to define something like a mean thermal conductivity, right, where did you guys do this in the basic heat transfer course? Ah, ME 317 you have not done, people from outside you have done. Okay. So, now, 
we get an expression for k m. What is k m? Okay. The first step in solving such a problem would be to get the expression for k of t, put it into the integral, evaluate the mean thermal conductivity and mean thermal conductivity into delta t divided by L will directly give the Q. First part of the problem is over. The second part involves getting the temperature distribution, it is slightly more involved. Is this clear now? Now let us assign some values, otherwise it is getting very dry. So we will assign some values and try to solve this problem. Problem number 40, new notebook eh? Vikram, uh. problem number 42, good. Problem number 42, consider the one dimensional, consider the one dimensional slab given in the figure, consider the one dimensional slab given in the figure okay so k is 15 into 1 plus 6 into 10 to the power of minus 4 t consider the one dimensional slab given in the figure the thermal conductivity of the slab material varies as k equals 15 into 1 plus 6 10 the minus 4 into t. Consider the one dimensional plane wall given in the figure. The thermal conductivity of the slab material varies as k equal to 15 into 1 plus alpha into t, where alpha is 6 into 10 to the minus 4 or 10 to the power of minus 4. Okay. The slab thickness L is 50 millimeter. The slab thickness L equal to 50 millimeters. The left side temperature T1 is 600 Kelvin, the right side temperature T2 is 300 Kelvin. So, left side temperature is 600 Kelvin, right side temperature is 300 Kelvin. QV equal to 0 and steady state exists in the slab, QV is equal to 0 and steady state exists in the slab, Q is equal to 0 and steady state exists in the slab for these conditions, for these conditions determine the heat flux across the wall, for these conditions determine the heat, fru heat flux across the wall and the temperature at the mid plane determine the heat flux across the wall and the temperature at the mid plane. And the temperature at the mid plane. Okay. We will we'll start solving the first part. Okay. So, First, get the mean thermal conductivity. Correct? Yeah. Now, tell me the value of Km.
ok. So, k m What is that Deepak? Ah. Nineteen point zero five. Nineteen point five. Five. Okay. Nineteen point five. Ah. Yeah, nineteen point zero five. Nineteen point zero five. What? Watt per meters per Kelvin, fine. Now, we can substitute in the expression Q, the heat flux is the product of mean thermal conductivity into delta T by L. Be ajar, quite something, huh? Some kilowatts, huh? 114.3 kilowatt. Kilowatt per meter square. Uh, correct. 114 point. So it's a reasonable thermal conductivity corresponding to stainless steel. Uh, terrific temperature difference of 300 Kelvin. Okay, so, we expect a reasonable heat flux of 114 kilowatt per meter square, all right. Okay, but this is the this is not the full story. Okay, the second part is more involved. What is the temperature at the mid plane? That is at x equal to 2.5 centimeter or x equal to 0 0.025 meter. Okay, so that is going to be a little more involved. Let us see how it so, this is okay up to this. Rohit, it is clear. Kaustub? No. The second part of the story is difficult. So, Just now evaluated A is a constant, the heat flux is a constant. One dimensional plane wall, no heat generation, steady state, whatever is coming from the left side has to go on to the right side, okay. Where else can it go? So, therefore, What is the x we want to do? x equal to x equal to uh, 0 0.025 mid plane. Yeah, uh, just get me the right side. Shall we take this fellow also here? Huh? What do you say? Hmm. Yeah, tell me what is this? Ethan, right side. Watch out, kilowatt. That is all, everything taken care of. Minus 190 point, very good. If we do not get the final answer, we will catch Vikram 190.7. Okay. Now, left side, what about the left side? Uh, what is T1?
what is happening now to the temperature distribution? You have to solve a quadratic. See, you have a very simple linear temperature distribution. Now, linear temperature distribution, constant thermal conductivity. Linear thermal conductivity, quadratic temperature. Quadratic thermal conductivity, cubic temperature. So, it will keep on in the difficulty level will escalate. Now, I hope to get a reasonable temperature. I do not know. So, let us see. So, this is a 3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 T square uh, plus T minus 600 minus 3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 into 600 square plus 190.5 equal to 0. Divide throughout by 3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 and make it into a decent quadratic equation. What do you get? Four, very good. Okay, now let's write the quadratic. Uh, uh, minus. What is the quadratic? See, you, there is a provision in the calculator, is it? Ah, but what is it? What is the C term? 5 1? 7 That divided by 3 is divided by 1 7 5. Ah, some 1 point? 7 2 5. 1 point? 7 2 5. On solving? T mid is 0.3. What is the big deal, man? The layman who has no knowledge of heat transfer will try to guess that it will be 600 plus 300 by 2. But it is off by 5 Kelvin. You may say what is there in 5 Kelvin. But suppose the K and the variation of K is much more severe and the two temperature differences are, are too much, then the layman approach will not work. You cannot simply take the arithmetic mean temperature difference and say that because there is a physics associated with this problem. You have got you. Have you, you should know the physics in order to get this. Are you getting the point? Therefore, this is 600, this is 300. Okay. 450, 600, 300. What did we get at the center now? Slightly more than this. Okay. So, a linear model for thermal conductivity gives rise to the yellow line. A linear model can also give rise to the orange line. The yellow line is for alpha greater than 0. This is for alpha less than 0. Thermal conductivity can also decrease with temperature, right? This panda is clear. The beauty is the linear temperature profile is disturbed. <coughs> now, we have a quadratic or a parabolic temperature profile which is consistent with the linear model for of a thermal conductivity, right. Alpha equal to 0 gives the linear model, fine. We, we got it numerically, we can also explain it intuitively, okay. Watch here. Since the temperature is the difference is the same, since the temperature difference is the same. For a given heat flux, for a linear temperature profile, there is a temperature gradient here. To transfer the same amount of heat at a higher temperature, if alpha is greater than 0, the thermal conductivity is more. So, Q is equal to K dt by dx, because Q is the same and K is more, the dt by dx must be lesser, it must be gentle for the case where alpha is greater than 0. By the same token, for the same Q, if alpha is negative, then the K corresponding to the constant K model has to be lower, therefore, the dt by dx has to be correspondingly higher to make up for the constant heat flux. 
Suppose I had told you like this, you, you may or may not believe me. That is why I took a detailed this thing where we numerically solved and I proved that for alpha greater than 0, the mid plane temperature will be always higher than what is predicted by the arithmetic mean temperature difference. Okay, right. So, once a linear we can do, we can have a quadratic fit for thermal conductivity and all this. So, now you know way of handling this, right. And uh, often times for large variations in temperature, this uh, constant thermal conductivity model is no good. Temperature, if the temperature difference is small, it is all right to use this, okay. Now, let us take the 1D plane wall with heat generation. The heat generation can take place because of a nuclear fission or it can take place because of a chemical reaction and so on. So, consider a plane wall like this. Okay. So, it is infinite in extent. Now, I have a material which has a constant thermal conductivity k, that is not complicated. But now, I have a fellow who is generating heat at the rate of q v watts per meter cube. But to make matter simple, I am taking it infinitely deep in the direction perpendicular to the plane of the board. Volume will be L into 1. Okay. Now, For convenience, I am starting x from here. Please look at the board. I am starting origin is here. So, this is L, this is also L. The slab is of thickness 2 L. If I leave him like this, what will happen? Without anything on the boundary, if it is both sides are insulated, what will happen? He is continuously generating heat. Temperature will increase, no steady state will be reached. Therefore, I am cooling it on both sides, I am bathing it with a fluid, the cold fluid which has a temperature of T infinity and which gives a heat transfer coefficient of H. Suppose, I have a fan or a blower or a pump which will pump the liquid, it has to be continuously removed, otherwise I am in trouble. Okay. So, I have H uh, not H1, H comma T infinity on both sides. Is the situation clear? Now, I want to find out what is the total heat which is transferred in the situation number 1. Number 2, what will be the temperature at the surface at the interface between the solid, between the solid and the liquid and most importantly, what will be the maximum temperature anywhere inside the solid and whether the maximum temperature anywhere in the solid respects or obeys the design limits. Okay. So, the sodium can in a nuclear reactor, you know a lot of fuel rods like this, right. If you look at the top view, one of this top view. So, there will be what are called hexagonal fuel sub assemblies, it is called SAs. Each of these hexagonal fuel assemblies, there will be lot of circular tubes they will be sheathed like that you will have several hexagonal assemblies. Okay. There will be small gaps in between these tubes and there will be gaps between these two hexagonal sub assemblies. So, that is called the inter wrapper distance. Then there will be because packing density cannot be 100 percent, there will be some gap in between. So, the sodium will flow from bottom to top, I am talking about sodium because the Indian reactor is sodium. So, bottom to top the sodium will flow, it will pick up the heat. And then it will go to a heat exchanger, then there is secondary heat exchanger where secondary sodium will pick up the heat from the primary sodium, it will get heated. Then at the third stage, this sodium will transfer the heat to the water, water will become steam and then it becomes regular rank and cycle. Okay. Now, this pumping of sodium, this, 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 this is the primary place where the fission heat is taken away from by the sodium. So, this heat transfer process is accomplished by the sodium pump. In the event of a tsunami or a 
earthquake or in the event of a station blackout, this pumping system will fail. When this pumping system fails, the high values of H which you got with force convection will suddenly go down. Then what happens is this core, this temperature will dramatically increase. All right. If immediately after there is a station blackout, there will be operators who will ensure that control rods are control rods are lifted and so that the reactor goes to subcritical condition. But it is not like this. If you switch off this light, it will go. But nuclear reaction is not like there is a half life. It will continue to generate heat for the next 24 to 48 hours. It may not be at critical condition. Therefore, it at a reduced power new efficient heat will continue to be generated. Now, in the absence of a pump, can natural convection sustain? Temperature will no doubt increase, but it will not, it should not increase to a level at which it leads to what is called the core meltdown temperature. When the core meltdown takes place, here they have all this, uh, this they, they will have all this, what is called the core catcher plate made of stainless steel. All. Once it is so hot, it will just penetrate, it will just make a hole and go deep and then it will, it will invade the soil and get in. Once it goes in, then it will horizontally spread. It will enter all your aquifers, this thing, it will enter the water, this thing, then with lethal radiation doses everywhere. So, this core meltdown is what everybody is afraid of. Okay. So, ultimately it is a, the nuclear react, whatever happened in Japan is a heat transfer problem. It is a heat transfer, your inability to transfer heat led to all this. So, so, heat transfer can be very, very critical. Okay. Now, let us do this. So, this is uh, 1 D, P is a function of constant Q V, then K is constant. Okay. Now, okay. so rho C p steady state steady state which term can be knocked off left side. Okay. So, we have got so this will be the equation if the fuel rod is basically infinitely deep in the other direction for one fuel rod what is the temperature distribution inside the rod subject to the convective boundary condition outside. Okay. So, can we integrate it twice? Integrating once, correct? Is that correct? Now, you will be able, you, you will be easily able to see why I took the x equal to 0 at the center. At this, do you expect a symmetric temperature distribution about the center? If you have a symmetric temperature distribution around the center, dt by dx at x equal to 0 has to be 0. Therefore, which term will not get knocked off here? A is 0. Okay. At x equal to 0, Okay, so T Q V X squared.
How will I get the B? How do I get the B? Or boundary condition? Convective boundary condition, you can apply minus k dt by dx at uh, x equal to 0, x equal to minus l or x equal to plus l will be equal to h and o. Okay. But I have a simpler way of doing it. Whatever heat is generated by the fuel rod must be taken away by the fluid, okay, by energy balance. What is the heat which is generated by the fuel rod Q V into, into 1, 2 L is the thickness, 1 is this, okay. watts per meter cube, meter, meter square watts, this will be equal to H into H into 2 into 1. into what is 2 into 1? 1 is this 1 meter square, 2 is left side, right side. Okay. So, okay. so can I get the H is known, Q V is known, can I get T L straight away? Yeah, but fine, but instead of doing mathematically, I am doing physically. If you apply the boundary condition also, you will get the same thing. That boundary condition is energy balance, is not it, right. Yeah. So, uh, what is this? T L will be equal to T infinity plus Q V. Okay. Comparing six and eight. This is the fine, right? No, this is known to us. Plus B, right? Is that correct? Or I am making a mistake? Is it okay? Therefore, T is equal to minus Q V x squared by 2 k plus T L plus huh, What are the units of this? Watts per meter cube, meter square. So, numerator is watts per meter. This is watts per meter per Kelvin. Therefore, the unit is Kelvin. So, this is something called the reference temperature excess, the reference temperature difference for the problem. 
this gives you the power of the heat generation to increase the temperature inside the wall. <coughs> Correct? So, we call the temperature access parameter. So, easily it can be seen that at x equal to 0, at x equal to 0 the temperature is maximum. At x equal to L this term becomes 0, T is equal to T L. That is already you know. What is T L? T L comes from the energy balance. Okay. Let us solve an example. For problem number 43, consider a 1D plane wall with constant Q V. Consider a 1D plane wall with constant Q V. Okay. Consider a plane wall, consider a plane wall with a constant Q V, all the pertinent details are shown on the figure, all the pertinent details are shown on the figure. All the pertinent details are shown on the figure, determine A, all details shown on figure, determine A surface temperature and B center temperature. Okay. This is representative, this is not, these are not the actual values encountered in a nuclear reactor. I did not choose to give an example, but this will give you an idea. Now, uh, we can get T L equal to T infinity plus Q V L by H, right? That is what we got. How much is this? Huh? 500 Kelvin, 300 plus 200. Huh? Deepak, you use 0.04, that is not correct. 0.04 is 2L, L is 0.02, right? Okay. Now, uh, T center equal to 500 plus. What is T center? Five hundred and six point. What does it what does it show? This new this fuel rod or whatever is generating heat, you are having a cooling medium which affords a heat transfer coefficient of 50, which is available at 27 degrees centigrade 300 Kelvin to do the cooling. So, the conduction is better, that is why from the surface to the center the difference is only 6.67 Kelvin. But there is a mismatch between the heat generation and the capacity to absorb the heat by convection. That is why from 300 the temperature rises to 500. So, a temperature difference of 200 degrees centigrade is required at the surface in order to accomplish the heat transfer. 
but now let us take a situation. Now let us say this is force convection, the Fukushima reactor whatever, this is all representative value. Let us say from 50 because of natural convection it suddenly drops to 5, what happens? If h drops to 5, how much is T L? Huh? What will happen to the fuel rod? Do not worry about one dimensional governing equation inside the rod at the surface itself cups. This is what happens where if the pumps fail. Of course, we assume lot of things steady state and all that, but this will be the starting story. Immediately some operator will put control rod, you will put boron something they will do all that, but Im immediately the first thing is there will be a there will be a thermal shock right. The H drops and suddenly the fuel rod temperature they will start rising like mad. Okay, fine. We will stop here. In tomorrow's class, we look at extended surface heat transfer that is, fins.